Welcome to Side Notes. I'm here at the Toronto Web Fest 2014. I'm here with Robert Mills, who's the founder of the IWCC. Thank you so much for your time there, Robert. My pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, uh, I w I'm, I'm not the founder. I'm one of many founders. There's a whole bunch of us, so the collective effort to make that thing happen. What is the, the IWCC? Well, it stands for the Independent Web Series Creators of Canada. We like to joke that the S is silent. Uh, the IWCC started out as a, a group of uh, web series creators who were meeting informally. We'd gather uh, in a pub and have some beers and just trade horror stories or uh, resources. Hey, who's got a sound guy? And just sort of chatting each other up about the work that we were doing and realizing, oh, there's, there's more of us out there doing this kind of thing. The, we got a Facebook group going and those numbers grew to the point where we started having these meetups and we had like 80, 90 people showing up and it became like this huge thing. And we realized, okay, as individual creators, you know, it, it, we don't, it, it's great to be independent. Everybody in this thing, field is very fiercely independent and rightly so, they deserve to be. But as an independent producer, if you go to a government organization or other policy uh, funding agency or something like that, uh, it's very difficult to uh, get heard because you're just one person. And so the idea was, well, we need a collective voice. We can do a lot more as an organization. It, nobody likes to formalize these things because it's such a hassle. But, you know, we realized it had to be done. So uh, a bunch of us got together and said, okay, let's do this. And it took a while. It took about, well, it's been three years now. But uh, uh, we finally incorporated last year as a nonprofit organization. And uh, it's representing uh, web series creators from all across Canada. The membership's growing. And the whole idea is to provide as much benefit to the membership as we can with um, uh, discounts uh, within industry, uh, informational resources, uh, encouraging uh, similar community gatherings like we had here in Toronto that grew and expanded, trying to get that happening all across the country, let people find their own folks locally and, and really encourage that. But also uh, to have a larger voice, uh, again, provincially, but mostly federally, uh, with respect to um, a policy that affects the internet, our access to the internet, our access to our audience, uh, as well as tax credits, uh, possible funding opportunities, uh, a whole myriad of things. Not all the membership is going to want to participate on, on that kind of level. Uh, not everybody's going to want to uh, be applying for funding from the traditional things. That's okay. Some do, and we think that everybody should have a voice doing that, and we think we're the people to do it. And what kind of numbers are we talking involved with your organization? Well, the, as I say, it started out here in Toronto, and right now in the Facebook group there, there's a little over 2,000 people. Uh, but that's, uh, some of them are from outside of the country, uh, and not all of those are IWCC members. Uh, I don't know the specific number of IWCC members. We had a huge membership drive going here the last couple of days at the WebFest here, and they were like busy laminating cards and handing them out. So it, that's been very gratifying to see. Uh, specific numbers, I don't know, but we do have people from all across the country, from coast to coast. Okay, website? The website is iwcc-ciwc.org. And the trailer I, I noticed on the website for the Toronto Web Fest yeah. had uh, Keanu Reeves in it. Now, yeah. As you sitting down there too, <laughs> to talk a little bit about that, how you created that? Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, Regan Latimer, who's the exec producer and programmer for the TO Web Fest, I mean, she's done a, an amazing job on this whole thing. It's just absolutely incredible what she's pulled together. Uh, she took me aside at one of the board meetings and said, I got this crazy idea. You know, the, you know that scene from Matrix Reloaded where the, the guy's sitting in a chair and there's all the screens? Can we do something like that, but we'll stick you in a chair? And then we're taught and put all the web series on the screens? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds fun. And she says, can we do it technically? Is that possible? And I'm like, yeah, we could do it. So uh, she scripted it, and uh, we got together in my house. We set up a green screen, and it was in my living room. And we sat there and uh, acted out my part. And then uh, we got busy. We were trading files back and forth. Uh, I was rotoscoping around Keanu Reeves. And uh, I had to make the chair that I was sitting in wasn't real. That was CG. So we had to do that. Uh, the suit I was wearing didn't fit properly. So the pants were, I had flood pants. And I didn't have it, shoes that matched. So I was just in my sock feet. So I had to digitally lower the hem of my trousers and paint in shoes. So it's like one thing after the other was like very, very silly, but a lot of fun to do. And it came together very quickly. And Regan was, was great. She, was, she put all the imagery in the screens and, and you know, just basically cut the whole thing together. It was really her, her plan. I was just a, a grunt and a, and a guy sitting in a chair for it. But <laughs> it was neat. It, was, it really worked. It was fun. Where do you see the, uh, the web series going, not only in Toronto? Let's talk, talk all the way across Canada. Mm. 
Well, it, it, what's great is seeing the, the growth of it is exponential. People are realizing, you know, the, people talk a lot about the democratization of the technology. The fact that, you know, I can pull this out of my pocket and it's a camera, I can edit with it, I can hit send and I'm a distributor, I'm a broadcaster. Uh, obviously there are better tools, uh, more elaborate tools, and, uh, but I can shoot a feature film with this thing and I can distribute it online. I can do that and I can promote from here. So that ability on its own, however rudimentary, is a huge game changer for how the industry operates. Because it used to be uh, the larger companies, you had to have a you know, big wallet in order to get in there and play the game, and they were in charge of the pipeline. And you've got broadcasters who are responsible for very limited shelf space. You've got seven days out of the week and only so many hours in the day, and so they get to pick and choose what goes on their, their network. And that is a bottleneck. That's a, a funnel that abruptly stops the flow of creativity. And there's commerce as well involved. People can be making money from this stuff, and they are. Uh, business models abound. People are figuring that stuff out. It's not just in Canada where these changes are happening. Obviously, it's all over the world, in the States as well. You're going to see a very fundamental shift in how content is created, even more so than we're seeing right now. What very about the copyright laws at the same time? I mean, they would have to change because as the technology changes, the Canadian copyright is not keeping up at this time. Well, can it, copyright, that's a whole other issue because copyright, uh, there's, there's two things happening there. One, you've got technological ability to do things with material now that didn't exist before. You've got individual creators who want to be able to answer back to the culture that they're in. You've got larger corporations that are fighting for longer and longer copyright terms, which is keeping material out of the public domain, which means, as an artist, I can't comment on my own culture because it's owned, and that's not right. Copyright was originally 14 years after the death of the creator, and now it's 90 years. And that's what they're aiming, they're aim yes, in the States it's 90 years. And so they're aiming for more and longer copyright terms. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, is a trade deal, it's been negotiated in secret, and it has it doesn't represent the will of the people of the countries involved. It's lobbyists and large media corporations who are mostly behind this. It covers a lot of ground, not just copyright or, or media entertainment, but it directly affects not just copyright and our ability to, uh, to, to, again, answer back to culture, but it also affects how we can access our audience. Those secret negotiations, those rules and regulations that are being uh, decided upon but in an undemocratic fashion, that is going to directly affect your ability to see our shows. It's going to affect our ability to distribute them so they can be seen. It's, a, it's affecting free speech. The, uh, it, it touches down to the, the fundamental core of what net neutrality is all about. And net neutrality is about free speech. So copyright is a, a thin wedge that is being used to derive greater control over the ability to distribute and uh, have access to content. So you're seeing as the internet is changing, do you see one day, maybe not in our lifetime, but the future generations, that they may have more freedom of speech because of the fact all the technology available to them and that they're letting their voice go out. Do you see the rules changing, let's say within the next maybe 30, 40 years? I see the rules changing over the next 10 years while the larger existing powers, entrenched powers, uh, are going to try to stop that from happening. Uh, I, but I'm all about the people's voice. Yes, the people's voice is going to continue no matter what. I firmly believe that. The technology, no, the, the genie's out of the bottle. Uh, the, this particular snake known as the internet, ha, it's not a snake with several heads, it's a snake with no head. And it's people, themselves are going to find ways around these laws. The more ridiculous the laws get to try to control the flow of information, the more you're going to be turning your own citizens into criminals and pirates. And if you're going to treat them like criminals and pirates, they're going to behave like it. So if you want a populace that's nice and well behaved and uh, a little bit compliant, then you've got to understand they, they have the right to speak and they've got the right to certain freedoms and they will exercise those rights. What was it John F. Kennedy said? Uh, um, if you don't make peaceful revolution possible, then it makes violent revolution inevitable. Nobody wants violent revolution. Well, I, I just want my MTV, as they used to say in the old days. JFK is one of my favorite uh, people to quote. You know, it's an amazing individual. I think he died too young. But 
you know, as, as we're finishing up right now, do you have any final words you want to share to people, maybe just get involved with this industry? Yeah, get out and make it. The only thing standing between you and actually being able to make something is yourself. If you don't have a camera, you know somebody with a camera, make a friend of someone with a camera. Uh, everybody's got access to the internet. If you don't have your own internet account, go to a library. You have the tools. The tools are readily available. So the only thing stopping you from telling your own story, whether it's a documentary, reality show, a narrative, comedy, whatever you want to do, get out there and make it. Part of the process of us being able to declare that space as public space is to occupy it. <laughs> and you have a website so people can quickly go check it. Maybe they want to fire you off a, a comment we didn't touch y on here. Yeah, sure. Uh, my personal website is robomills.net, R-O-B-B-O-M-I-L-L-S.net. And uh, yeah, yeah, contact oh, me. Thank you so much, sir. My Robert. pleasure, my pleasure. Good to meet you.